So, there's this idea about wine and leaving it to age that it becomes better, though this is generally only true for wines with a lower pH due to its acidity, meaning that some wines are not meant to be kept for longer periods. Over lots of time, aging wine will actually cause it to spoil. After all, wine is just grape juice becoming vinegar. Though, what about cannabis? Does it get better with age? Well, let's find out. One of the final conversions of cannabinoids within cannabis is from THCA to CBNA or from THC to CBN. So let's review the precursors to THCA and CBN. It all starts with CBGA or cannabigrolic acid, which uses an enzyme within the plant to convert it to THCA, CBDA, or CBCA. THCA can then take one of two main paths depending on what happens to the plant at this point. With direct heat, also known as decarboxylation, THCA will turn into THC. If the THCA is not decarbed but instead left for an amount of time, the THCA will be converted directly into CBNA, or cannabinolic acid. From here, THC, after being decarbed and left for a certain amount of time, will create CBN. Also, at this point, CBNA, if heated or decarbed, will then turn to CBN. You can see both transactions here in a short animation I made. As these animations are crude and without some explanation prior don't make much sense, they are a good way to ex understand what happens. First let's see THCA to THC to CBN, which was at the top of our reaction chart. Now let's see THCA to CBNA to CBN. The effects of cannabinol can vary from person to person, but we will discuss why this is later. CBN is only about 10 to 18 percent as effective as THC as providing an intoxicating effect, which is why T CBN is only considered minorly intoxicating. By itself, CBN acts as an antibacterial, anticonvulsive, anti-inflammatory, and can also uh, act as a possible appetite stimulant or change the perception of pain. With THC, CBN can minorly increase the effects of THC, however, this is only in some studies. Other than that, CBN mixed with THC can produce sedative effects as well as release interocular pressure, which is just pressure behind the eyes. Something interesting though is that most places claim that CBN by itself has sedative properties. When I researched this further, I found that this could be a misconclusion of evidence found. What this means is that while CBN being created within the flower from one of two methods we talked about earlier, most of the time the THCA converts directly down to CBNA, which will convert to CBN. However, this process can take months to accomplish. During this time, the monoterpenes can be evaporated from the flower, leaving behind the sesequent terpenes, which generally have more sedative effects. Finally, why do cannabinoids act different from person to person? Well, this actually has to deal with the receptors within the body. CB1 and CB2 receptors are both G-couple proteins. The CB2 receptor specifically is created by a gene known as CNR2. This gene is common for mutations, giving the reasons why people have different experiences with cannabis. Final thoughts are that CBN is closer in relation to THC than CBD. The reason behind this is that CBD usually acts as an antagonist for the receptors regulating the amount of cannabinoids that can bind to it, compared to THC and CBN that can be considered agonists of the same receptors. And with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. If you enjoyed this video, please follow along so you can see the next one. And if not, please have a great rest of your day.